so my dear friends uh, the honorable supreme court the strongly uh, the issues raised before the honorable supreme court is uh, what is the uh, role of judiciary the nclt and then nclat with regard to the scope of adjudication of the decisions taken by the coc the whole subject as we have been discussing is that uh, Uh, the committee of creditors uh, must vote seventy-five uh, percent uh, to approve the resolution plan, and that will be presented before the adjudicating authority. And what is the scope of adjudicating authority? And a strong plea was made by Abhishek Singh, we appearing for the appellants, that uh, committee of creditors uh, is doing a public uh, interest function. The functions of the public. Casino C uh, is a public interest driven. Whenever there is a public interest driven, you are supposed to a uh, doctrine of uh, reasonability, test of reasonability and fairness must be applied. And uh, then, what is the problem here? Is that uh, it uh, almost confirmed to little less than seventy five percent, and the rejecting uh, dissenting shareholders, uh, the financial creditors. have refused to give their reasons why they have rejected so they are persuading the nclt the adjudicating authority to look into that call them and ask them what is their due diligence and that could be the basis for challenge and imputing malfeasance to uh, the financial creditors second plea taken was that uh, already it has come down uh, the amendment amended uh, act requires only 66% and therefore uh, at least uh, this honorable uh, supreme court must relax that condition by the because by the time the judgment was given 66% was there even though at the time of voting only 75% was there so the honorable supreme court in this uh, paragraphs 35 beautifully analyzed uh, uh, the role of the adjudicating authority as you all know the law settled by the honorable supreme court is very clear that voting percentage given is mandatory it is not directory or discretionary and two the law laid down by the honorable supreme court is uh, the commercial wisdom of committee of creditors are not justiciable it is left to them in support of it already we have discussed uh, the scope uh, the objectives the past uh, different acts and all now further they try to uh, reason out uh, uh, the arguments of mr abhishek singh let me take you through the para 35 it's a beautiful explanation the discretion of the adjudicating authority nclt is circumscribed by section 31 it is limited to scrutiny of the resolution plan as approved by the requisite percentage of voting share of the financial creditors so the adjudicating authority must see whether 75% then 66% now have approved it or not but even that inquiry the grounds on which adjudicating authority can reject the resolution plan is in reference to the matter specified in section 32 so yeah, suppose if they want to reject what is that uh, test they should apply they must go to section 30 sub section 2 when the resolution plan does not conform to the stated requirements when the resolution plan does not conform to the stated requirements reverting to 32 section 30 sub section 2 the inquiry to be done what should they do that is one whether the resolution plan provides for the payment of insolvency resolution process costs in a specified manner in priority to the repayment of other debts of the corporate debtor so the repayment of the debts of debts backed by the normative data the repayment of the debts of the operational creditors in a prescribed manner to the management of the affairs of the corporate debtor the implementation and supervision of the resolution plan uh, does not contravene any of the provisions of the law for the time being in force and uh, the sixth one is conforms to such other requirements as may be specified by the board now the honorable supreme court took up the uh, discussion on the board who is that board 
what are the functions laid down in the act and uh, there also they found the act is very clear that they are not giving a, a scope for ibbi to get into the wisdom of the commercial decision of the committee of creditors so that also they try to point out if you see that the board refer to uh, the board refer to is what is established under section 188 of the inb code the powers and functions of the board have been delineated in section 196 of inb code none of the specified functions of the board directly or indirectly pertain to regulating the manner in which the financial creditors ought to or ought not to exercise their commercial wisdom during the voting on the resolution plan under section 30 sub section 4 so beautifully they found that is there is any provision made out for that board uh, because uh, that reg uh, section 6 uh, uh the conforms to such other requirements as may be prescribed by board so that means what is this board is trying to say there also they found the legislature is very careful uh, to give a complete freedom to the committee of creditors to decide now the next question uh, the subjective satisfaction of the financial creditors at the time of voting is bound to be a mixed bag of varieties of factors so they are trying to get into how will the normally a business uh, prudence uh, that is being uh, expected to be applied by the financial creditors who lent money they will be thinking the subject to satisfaction of the financial creditors at the time of voting is bound to be mixed bag of variety of fact variety of factors the feasibility and the viability of the proposed resolution plan and including their perceptions about the general capability of the resolution applicant to translate the projected plan into a reality correct the resolution applicant is chosen what is his background prime fic is experience past should give confidence to the uh, financial creditors that is capable that is also very important it's not only just confirming to this whether it is possibility to convert that plans into actions and reality then the resolution applicant may have been given may have given projections backed by normative data but still in the opinion of the dissenting financial creditors it would not be free from being speculated these aspects are completely within the domain of the financial creditors who are called upon to vote on the resolution plan under section 30 sub section 4 of the inb code so honorable supreme court uh, is trying to look at these things uh, the whatever could be said uh, and done it is impossible for the law to lay down a strict procedures what is how to earn profit it is like vedas we can only talk about the experiences but that experiences cannot give you an idea to get in and get earn profits so very few are successful so therefore whether it will be successful or not will be left to the financial creditors who are supposed to be experts uh, in assessing the uh, capability of the resolution applicant in addition to viability of the plan and the normative data it would not be free from being speculated these aspects are completely within the domain of the financial creditors who are called upon now we go to para 36 for the same reason even the jurisdiction of nclat b is a continuous process appellate body of the proceedings would be uh, circumscribed in regard and more particularly an account of section 32 of the inb code which envisages uh, that appeal from an order approving the resolution plan shall be in the manner and on the grounds specified in section 613 of the inb code so we have talked about the adjudicating authority nclt now we are coming to uh, the appellate body appellate body decision making is uh, controlled by section 61 whereas this is under section 30 now appellate uh, appeals to appellate authority this is very clear not withstanding anything to the contrary contained in under companies act any person aggrieved by the order of the adjudicating authority under this part may prefer appeal to the national company appellate tribunal then uh, 613 is what they have taken as the guiding force an appeal against an order approving a resolution plan under section 
may be filed on the following grounds so what are the grounds the approved resolution plan is in contravention of the provisions of any law for the time being in force and uh, first one the second one is there is there has been material irregularity in the exercise of the powers by the resolution professional during the corporate insolvency period that is also a point given so here one lesson for us is uh, as a resolution professional one has to be exactly tuned to the proceedings laid down under the act three the debts owed to the operation creditors of the corporate debtors have to have not been provided for in the resolution plan in a manner specified by the board here again just for our discussion the resolution professional must be very cautious because the object of the carp is to take care of interest of everybody though it is driven by financial creditors it is not one sided show so that means the resolution professional must take the interest of everybody in a proper manner for the insolvency resolution process costs have not been provided for the repayment in priority to other the debts so the resolution plan does not comply with any other criteria specified by the board same that point is carried on now the honorable supreme court now proceeding based on that what are the grounds on which uh, a aggrieved party can appeal to the nclat and that means nclat must focus only on this uh, section 613 on a bare reading of the provisions of the IB, inb code it would appear that the remedy of appeal under section 611 is against an order passed by the adjudicating authority which will which we will assume may also pertain to recording of the fact that the proposed resolution plan has been rejected or not approved by a vote of not less than 75% of the voting share of the financial creditors indubitably the remedy of appeal including the width of jurisdiction of the appellate authority and the grounds of appeal is a creature of statute the provisions investing jurisdiction and authority in the nclt or nclat as noted earlier has not been made uh, has not made the commercial decision exercised by coc of not approving the resolution plan or rejecting the same justiciable so they are uh, analyzing what is the what are the grounds against which uh, uh, nc uh, the aggrieved party can come before the appellate body is there any provision there which says that the decision of the financial creditors also is the subject of judicial review no not justiciable this point has to be kept in mind this position is reinforced from the limited grounds specified for instituting an appeal that too against an order approving the resolution plan under section 31 first that the approved resolution plan is in contravention of the provisions of any law for the time being in force second there is a material irregularity in exercise of the powers by the resolution professional during the corporate insolvency resolution period third the debts owed to the operational creditors have not been provided for in the resolution plan in the prescribed manner fourth the insolvency resolution plan costs have not been provided for the repayment in priority to all other debts fifth the resolution plan does not comply with any other criteria specified by the board significantly the matters or grounds meet under section 30 sub section 2 or that is 30 and 2 will be nclt 613 and nclat or uh, regarding testing the via via validity of the approved resolution plan by coc and not for approving the resolution plan which has been disapproved or deemed to have been rejected by the coc in exercise of its commercial business decision further undoubtedly the inquiry in such a, an appeal would be limited to the power exercisable by the resolution professional under section 32 of the inb code or at best by the adjudicating authority nclt under section 312 read with 311 of the code no other inquiry would be inquiry would be far permissible further the jurisdiction bestowed upon the appellate authority is also expressly circumscribed 
it can examine the challenge only in relation to the ground specified in section 3613 of the INB code which is limited to matters other than inquiry into the autonomy or the commercial wisdom of the dissenting uh, financial creditors. Thus, the prescribed authorities, judicial authorities, NCLT and NCLAT have been endowed with limited jurisdiction as specified in the INB code and not to act as a court of inquiry or exercise plenary powers. So, very, very clearly emphasizing Honorable Supreme Court, the adjudicating authority or the NCLAT, again, which uh, the decision of NCLT is challenged, should just confine to the provisions of the Act. And they should not uh, uh, exercise the power which was never there in the Act. In our view, neither the adjudicating authority nor appellate authority has been endowed, para 39, endowed with the jurisdiction to reverse the commercial wisdom of the dissenting financial creditors and that too on the specious ground that it is only an opinion of minority financial creditors. The fact that substantial or majority percentage of financial creditors have accorded approval to the resolution plan would be of no avail. Unless the approval is by a vote of not less than 75%. After the amendment, it is 66% of voting share of the financial creditors. To put it differently, the actions of the liquidation process postulated in Chapter 3 of the INB Code is avoidable only if the, ap the approval of the resolution plan is by a vote of not less than 75%. And uh, conversely, the legislative intent is to uphold the opinion uh, or hypothesis of minority dissenting financial creditors. The legislative intention is... Uh, had it been, um, that is what the Honorable Supreme Court is thinking, um, prevail, uh, <coughs> coming to the issue.